What's up guys and welcome to the weekly Q&A. Just a real quick reminder that there is a giveaway winner to announce at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. Cosmic Outpost and Miguel Perez both ask what we think about the idea that Palpatine is somehow involved in Rey's creation, similar to his involvement with Anakin. I don't think that's going to happen, because Rey was born well after his death, or yeah. physical death, or I don't know <laughs> what to call that right now. Uh, but if that did turn out to be the case, if she were the creation of the will of the Force or something, I'm not totally opposed to that um i don't know how i feel about it being a machination of palpatine that was never fully realized like officially mm -hmm. even though it was in the revenge of the sith script at one point and it's heavily alluded to i don't know i i, I don't love it i don't hate it uh i'm not a fan of that idea that palpatine had anything to do with creating ray or even anakin like i know you said it was in the script and like they allude to it in comics and stuff but i i think it was just a forced thing i don't think palpatine really was responsible and, and like there, there's a reason i assume that george took it out of the script he decided yeah. not to include that and i mean read into it what you will i guess but yeah i agree i like it being a force thing. I like that Anakin was created by the force uh, to balance it or whatever. Yeah. And I think Rey is a similar thing. Powerful darkness rises and the force creates a new vessel. Right. And we've heard in different comics that there have been multiple vessels. Anakin's one. Luke is one. Leia, I think you could argue, maybe one. Uh, and Rey is definitely one. Yeah. So. Yeah, I I'm fine with it just being something the Force decided to do because it's the Force. Yeah. Zachary wants to know if Rey potentially starting a new order of Force users goes against what Luke said about him not being the last Jedi. I think that's kind of just semantics. Like, I, I think that the term Jedi, when Luke says it, could mean specifically, like, yes, the strict doctrine of the Jedi or just, like, I will not be the last form of like light using force user mm -hmm. I, don't know. <laughs> I i think that it's just kind of maybe ray will be a skywalker but that could be a new term that still basically means jedi it could mean like what the jedi were supposed to be because we've only ever experienced the jedi in the form of luke when there was just like one to three Jedi mm -hmm. or during the Clone Wars, where it's been pretty specifically stated over and over again that the Jedi had kind of fallen away from what they're supposed to be. Yeah, he said the Jedi in the beginning of the movie, he says the Jedi need to end. But he's talking about like the how they originally ran things. The, yeah, and... the Jedi as we know them. Yeah. But also when he says... I will not be the last Jedi. That's pretty open ended. I mean, right? Yeah. She she could be a Jedi. She and we don't even know if she's really if Skywalker means a new Force order or something. Yeah. It's just kind of what we're thinking, but I I don't think it necessarily goes against what he said. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it, remi it reminds me of an Avengers Endgame when. Sorry, guys. We just got out of the theater uh, seeing the movie. That was so close. I... That was a close one. <laughs> I just really want to talk about oh. it. Okay? I want to talk about it. Levi Bond asks if the First Order will have total control of the galaxy in the rise of Skywalker. I, I think, yeah, in a way. I don't think it's going to be like imperial levels of control where mm -hmm. it's like we are the government. I think that there's still probably going to be fighting for control but it'll be like a it, it's a hostile takeover kind yeah. of thing it's gonna be really interesting it depends on how much time has passed exactly i guess but i mean they've had enough time to build new ships and potentially you know take over planets the, the we, only oh. we we just don't know the only thing that we've seen after the last jedi really is how they have handled like the invasion of this one planet from the poe dameron comic and it's like they have taken over i guess but it's not like like the 
citizens are fighting back. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's kind of what we're going to see is that they might have like ships controlling these planets, but people aren't going to be happy about it. They're not going to just take that. I think uh, what Luke's example is meant to inspire is all of the people of the galaxy and they're going to be like no we, we can stand up and fight for this ourselves yeah it won't just be the resistance it'll be the resistance and whatever planet they're on like they're all going to be working together that's that's yeah. what i'm thinking i think we are going to see that that scene of kylo ren kind of tackling that guy i think we are going to see them trying to like take over a certain area and like get rid of the citizens there that's that's kind of what the images that were shown kind of looked like. Right. Like, I don't know if they're trying to enslave the people there or wipe them out. I think the plan was probably like when Snoke was in charge to just steamroll the galaxy and expect that people will fall in line. Mm -hmm. And I think that what Luke has done is going to make that not happen. They're not going to be able to steamroll the galaxy. People aren't just going to fall in line. Uh, so that's kind of what I expect to see that while the first order has control of planets, it's not a happy control. Yeah. Harrison Edgar wants to know what ancient civilization we think we will be exploring in Fallen Order. So he pointed out that this is actually in like the description of the Fallen Order trailer, which I didn't realize and they didn't really talk about it in mm -hmm. the panel, but yeah, apparently we're going to be exploring an ancient civilization at one point, which I am all about. The Indiana Jones fan in me is like, yes, please. <laughs> uh, give me some space uncharted. Yeah, I mean, he's he's got that ancient looking uh, like lightsaber hilt. Right. And there was a few images in the panel that looked like he was standing in this ancient hall with like writing on the walls and stuff like that. So I, I don't know what it could be, but... I'm, I'm sure it'll be related to the Jedi. Yeah. Uh, maybe it was like an ancient Jedi civilization where like everyone there was a force user. Um, but yeah, I have to imagine it involves the lightsaber because mm -hmm. I don't think Cal is going to have one. I think a significant part of the game is going to be you getting a lightsaber. Yeah, that'll be the MacGuffin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, I don't know. Other than saying it has to be related to the Force and likely the Jedi or Force users or something. Yeah, but because he's he was a Padawan, mm -hmm. right? So and then he meets someone that was a Jedi but isn't necessarily tr going to train him. Yeah, they've been very vague so, about all that. Yeah, he's got to find something, learn something about the Force and it's probably going to be through wherever he ends up finding this ancient stuff. Yeah. But yeah, give me some old ruins and silly little puzzles to solve. <laughs> well, I I love that in the Uncharted game where you have your little notebook. Oh, maybe instead of like an actual notebook, you'll have like a little data pad and you can flip <laughs> around and be like, "Okay, if I match this symbol to that symbol, okay. I, I love that stuff." You can do the puzzles, I'll do the fighting. Okay. <laughs> Alex Brandt asks, what you want more, a trivia victory over Sam Witwer or one at Dragon Con? Honestly, Dragon Con. <laughs> I mean, like, I really, I want to play Sam again, obviously, and the Schmodown is a lot of fun. It's public and, like, all that. But I started this channel because of that Dragon Con <laughs> trivia, and it's been four or five years, and I still haven't won it. Like, that. that's my white whale i say we combine the two and oh, yeah. have sam there, there it is sam Whitmore has been to dragon con several times uh -huh. he goes pretty often if he's there trivia is there have him come to dragon con trivia and get a taste of what that life is like yeah. <laughs> kill two white whales with one harpoon is that how the saying goes <laughs> know, that's kind of grim <laughs> <laughs> but yeah let's just combine them but i mean Ultimately, I think I'd go Dragon Con. I mean, especially if it's a live event. I know a lot of you guys want to see him and Sam go head to head, including myself. Uh, it would be fantastic. But there's something about, yeah, the, the history of Dragon Con trivia with us. I guess the thing, like, I want to play Sam, but I, like, don't necessarily have this drive to, like, 
beat Sam. Yeah. I like playing the Schmodown. It's fun to play, and playing Sam would be a lot of fun. Uh, and, but if I lost to him, I'd be like, hey, I lost to Sam Whitworth. I lost to Darth Maul. That's all right. Yeah. But every year that I lose at Dragon Con again, <laughs> a little piece I just, of like, you dies. Just have that thousand yard stare out into the crowd like yeah <laughs> second place again huh who, who am i even <laughs> do i even know of a star war that's it for patron questions if you're a patron and you didn't see your question answered here just head over to patreon where we left you a written response if you're not a patron you can learn more by following the link in the description just a dollar a month will get you access to extra star wars explained content like audio commentaries for the films and for the clone wars this week's episode is cargo of doom we also just released a mock schmodown that we put together yeah for uh, Molly to train for her celebration showdown. And as of this week, our comic reactions are back. Uh, I'm going to start doing those every week, just kind of an off-the-cuff, unscripted reaction to the comics that were released on Wednesday. So you can check all of that out right now if you're interested. So with all the Infinity Stones to get... Oh, sorry. On to YouTube questions. Aaron Farrow asks how Jedi younglings were cared for as babies or toddlers. So the book Master and Apprentice actually goes into this just a little bit. So good timing on that. Oh, I haven't gotten there yet. Uh, they they don't really talk much about it. It's just that they mention like back in my days of being in the nursery and they had like <laughs> nursery carers who I guess were force sensitive. Again, yeah. they don't go into a ton of detail about it. We we just watched a Clone Wars episode where with. Cad Bane looking for the force sensitive kids and there was that one Rodian baby that's like floating all the little balls I, mm -hmm. I feel like a, jet, a force sensitive baby would be dangerous oh man I can't imagine like what those poor caretakers it's, would just be running around catching things that are floating around it just makes me think of the Incredibles yeah oh man <laughs> like Jack Jack just setting things on fire yeah. and <laughs> well this baby's got force speed crawl and <laughs> <laughs> this one's walking up walls and stuff. Oh man, and like I'm sh like imagine Kylo Ren but not like as Ben Solo baby but like Kylo Ren baby having like ba a tantrum. Baby like yeah, like Kylo Ren level tantrum tem temper tantrums. Well, like you know when Vader has his no moment in Revenge of the Sith and he's crushing droids and stuff. <laughs> I mean, think of a the terrible twos. Oh man. With a force sensitive kid just like you better give that kid that extra cookie. Crushing building blocks and crumbling like <laughs> some poor kid's toys. Uh, we didn't really answer your question at all, <laughs> except to say that there is apparently like a Jedi nursery where like one to I think four or five year olds just hang out. Yeah. And, and like as you grow, you know, you have to train in order to learn more about the force to use the force. I don't. I don't think babies are going to be going around setting stuff on fire and <laughs> yeah i don't know some of them might if, the, if there's another chosen one out there yeah we'll know it pretty quickly that's a warning sign of a chosen one <laughs> they just set that curtain on fire <laughs> friender wants to know how we feel about nix okami being swapped out with the twin girls in ahsoka's walkabout arc in season seven so yeah what we knew about that arc from i think two years ago three years ago yeah, three, at Celebration London. Dave Filoni talked about some of Ahsoka's stories, what they would have been. He went into the Siege of Mandalore, and one of the arcs was Ahsoka's walkabout, and she was going to learn how to live a life outside the Jedi Temple, and she was going to meet this kind of scoundrel-type guy named Nix Okami. They were going to kind of have a thing for each other. Uh, it sounds like he has now been swapped out for two twin girls, uh, and, you know, I'm fine with that because... I think that's something different to explore. Uh, we got to explore some of Ahsoka's feelings for like Lux Bonteri. Mm -hmm. We haven't really gotten to see her explore, uh, at least on screen, like f just friendship. Yeah, I was going to say um, with what little time they have left to wrap up all of these stories, I feel like throwing in a love interest for Ahsoka probably wasn't the best choice. Yeah. To tie everything together. I mean, uh, originally we were going to get like a season seven and eight and maybe right. more. So. Yeah. so, yeah. And I like your point about her just learning how to make friends and like ask for help 
from normal people who yeah. know nothing about the Jedi. I mean, her closest friend prior to this was Barris, and that <laughs> didn't end great. So yeah. I, it might be a little bit of like learning how to trust. And yeah, I think there's still going to be this interesting dynamic where uh, the people of level 1313 on Coruscant, like Nyx was going to not trust the Jedi. And according to the trailer, it sounds like these girls are also not going to think too highly of the Jedi. Mm. It'll be interesting to see her kind of, is she going to hide that from them? Is she going to own up to it eventually? How's that going to work? Yeah. Well, she said herself, she is no Jedi. That's true. <laughs> that's just, that's just become her catchphrase. She's, oh, me? Well, I'm no Jedi. I'm no Jedi. I'm no Jedi. <laughs> nope. Not me. <laughs> I'm just laughing at this name. <laughs> 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 Get it out. <laughs> I know which name you're talking about, and it gave you the giggles. Darth Bong asks if we think the guild and the... <laughs> you stop giggling. You gave me the giggles. Darth Bong asks if we think the guild and the Mandalorian will be similar to the bounty hunter guild from Legends. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it will because they made a big deal during the panel, the Mandalorian panel. John Favreau was like, "We're bringing things back from Legends." That's that's true. I forgot about that. So I I think that that's probably going to be one of them. Whether if it's, it might not be identical, mm -hmm. but I do think that they're probably going to try to work some of that stuff in. Yeah. Mac wants to know if we think the compass from Battlefront Two will play any role in Episode Nine. Ooh. Ooh. No, I don't we're think getting, so. I mean, we're getting kind of nautical with the the Death Star ship remains in the water. We could use a compass. Yeah. I don't think they took it off Octo, though. I think it's still sitting there. Yeah, um, that makes sense. I, the, the compass was just a really cool... I, I just wanted to talk about the compass because I loved that they developed it for Battlefront 2, and then they were looking for things to put in luke's hut that he had gathered before and they like caught her cur they caught word of this compass and they were like let's just send it to props and get it made real quick and yeah. like we got to talk to uh mitch one of the writers for the battlefront 2 game and he was just like i can't believe they did that like i don't think he knew they were doing that until he saw the movie and he's yeah. like oh my gosh something i helped make <laughs> is in a movie it's that was pretty cool yeah i remember like recognizing it the first time we saw the movie and i was like oh that was from the yeah, game really cool little piece oh. of connective tissue yeah but i i don't think that it's gonna be anything more than a little easter egg i don't think it's gonna have any relevance at all in nine yeah it's just like captain america's compass stop leo valverde asks what we thought of the biggs and porkins adventure in the age of rebellion special yeah I mean, you know, you know the answer, I think, that it's not what I wanted out of a big story. Well. Bigs in a Speedo, sure. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, I, I want a Bigs, Porkins, like, we're going on an adventure story, not on vacation. It was just, it was weird. <laughs> like, you didn't read it, did you? I don't think so. It, it was, like, Porkins starts to have, like, this existential crisis where he's, like, <laughs> We're, we're killing Imperials, sure, but they have families, too. And, like, it's, like, some heavy stuff. And Por or Biggs is like, well, let's forget about, about all that and go on a vacation. And they go to, like, this beach thing. And Porkins is still, like, the tone is just weird because it's, like, seesawing between this weird, goofy thing they're doing and Porkins being like, oh, my God, I've killed so many people. And, like, <laughs> it's just... And Biggs just doesn't feel like he's in character for me. Mm. Like, it's not he's just there to be kind of goofy and yeah goofy yeah and guys. he is anything but <laughs> guys get it together but i mean i'm not gonna make a stink out of it because it's like okay they <laughs> they made a little joke about this character that one person in the universe like loves and adores <laughs> it's not like they need to cater everything to me so no, not not exactly a fan of the comic, but what are you going to do? Yeah. What It's nothing like his own personal collection of fan fiction of, about Biggs. That's 
that it's really he, he's in a speedo in every single one of them. So it's really good stuff, guys. In a way, <laughs> it's my stories <laughs> <laughs> made reality. <laughs> That's it for questions. Now to announce our giveaway winner, that is Weston Hawk. Weston, I already emailed you and you emailed me back. So like we're, we're already on the same page and we're going to send that out to you ASAP. And we just wanted to say thank you again to Miguel and Mercedes for making this giveaway happen. Uh, that was awesome of you guys to give us such cool prizes. Yeah, that was so sweet of you. Thank yeah. you. But that's all the time we have for questions today. If you want to leave a question for next week's video, just put it in the comments below or sign up for Patreon to join our weekly Q&A discussion. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And as always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.